um, let's begin by coming into ourselves and into the moment and just honoring this day and this space and take a nice full breath in through the nose and, uh, and let yourself sink into the chair. Another breath in. And feel your body softening and relaxing. Tension just melting away. And one more breath in. And if you turn your hands up on your lap for a moment, just let your palms be open. And let them mirror the receptivity of your heart and your mind. And you might envision a triangle between your third eye and your left and right palm. And then another triangle between your heart and your left and right palm. And one between your navel and your left and right palm. And so we make sacred geometry together in this moment. Bringing in through the crown of the head the beautiful golden light of the divine. Inhale through the crown of the head and exhale through the first, second, and third triangles into your feet, into the beautiful earth. And again, bringing in that golden light into the triangle of the heart. Bringing in the golden light into the triangle of the third eye, the pineal consciousness, the Christ consciousness. And inhaling again into the center of your body, the golden light. And just let the energy out through your feet into the beautiful Gaia that supports us. Who we rest on, who we travel on, who we are born on, and where we die, where we leave this life for the next. And we are suspended in these pyramids of sacred golden geometry between heaven and earth. Feeling the life force and the heaven force as it vibrates through us, tuning us, healing us, helping us with our new story, our new inner creation story. And we know that we are awakened as we make this connection. We are healed. We are suspended as we have asked between the Heavenly Father, the Earthly Mother. We are the molecules floating in the form of a human dancing together on the strand of our DNA, echoing and vibrating change, enlightenment, connection to the greater God Self. Each one of these triangles represents connection
and they are given to you in this moment with special love from the all that is, from the one I am consciousness that we all share, that humanity shares, the point of connection between us all, the I am, the I am always. I am perfect, I am whole, I am complete. I am God. The one is who I am. And just bring that knowing deeper into yourself. Let your humanity accept it. Let your humanity accept what your divinity already knows. And let them meld as you are here to do into one beautiful, vibrating, vibrant being. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. One of the questions that has been asked in the past, in the original days, when my partner and I first connected, what was the reason you came? And if you have not heard this before, dear ones, it's important you know. For the potential consciousness that humanity was heading in was going to rewrite the history and rewrite the potential of history and change the profits of history of everything that would follow. Spirit, what you call God, is supposed to know everything. But Spirit, what you call God, does not know what you're going to do in free choice. And that is why you have called this a test. And it's not a test of your humanism, and it's not a test of your soul, and it's not a judgmental thing. It's a test of the planet. And you are a part of that. Consider yourselves those in expression in white coats performing the experiment with the consciousness that you come in with and the complexities that you develop over time. If left alone without the knowledge of who you are, what would happen on the planet? For you to go into 3D and stay there, where would it go? Where would the vibration of this earth go with humanity if you didn't know what I know? And so it's the test of the consciousness of Earth, of you, and it's a fair one. And it's what you do. And I arrived because of what you did. And there were many like me. And I wouldn't have come otherwise. But the potentials of the change before you we have seen before. And in the last 24 years, all of the information given in love, never conflicting, were to alert you to what you're doing now, to help you to hold on to what you have, to give you hope that there was purpose and an answer to the puzzle. And that's why we're here. And that is why we remain here. For you start to plant the seeds. And as you watch them grow, again, the energy will start shifting. 
And these are metaphors as what is going to follow about the true essence of God as exemplified within the human being. The only way you can see God on earth is through humans. And you knew that. And so it is in your revelations as old souls and light workers that carry the visualization and activation of the perception of the divine. It's up to you. And so what follows, not very long, but profound, is yet another parable and the first one given in the new energy after 2012. The parable is not that unique in the fact that the parable meanings are almost always the same. <laughs> but given in a different perspective and circumstance. I want my partner to go slow for we have a lot to say and in the saying there will be reflection that is to say you will see yourselves. This particular parable will not be sequestered to the ears in this room but thousands will hear it and understand and so we begin. The subject of all the cryon parables often is a man, but not really. We refer to him as woe, but he is both male and female, for he is a woe man. And in this, we do not wish to genderize the human but since you do automatically, we will call him a he. This is the story of woe and his box of belief. And it's a story for the times. And it's filled with purpose and honor. In lesson, realization, and awakening. And I want you to hear it correctly. Humans love stories, and so let us begin. Woe as a child grew up in a very loving family. And his mother and father took him to that which you would call an organized spiritual system of belief. Woe was exposed to this at a very early age, and it became his belief. And through his growing years, he learned more and more about it. And through his growing years, he learned to enjoy it. So that by the time Woe was an adult, he was fully invested in this belief. And we call it a belief box because it was restrained. That is to say, there was structure around it. In this belief box, the structure honored God. The structure is often necessary for humanity to create a system where things make sense for them. And it did in his box of belief. His father told him early on that there were rules around God. And Woe saw the sense of it. It made sense to Woe because it was just exactly as he would expect around himself and his friends. He was told many things. There was doctrine that would outline the rules that would please God and displease God. There were guiding emotions around what was and was not appropriate in life. There were rules to live by which made sense that had integrity and honesty. And Woe accepted all of them slowly. 
Woe carried scripture with him. Scripture from the prophets and from the prophet's prophets that were guiding lights in his life. And they made sense to him. He carried a pocket version of them with him all the time so he would then remember what they had to say. In his worship time, he would select a master and pray to him. Woe was very pleased with his box of belief, and those around were also pleased with Woe. But the box had its limits. They weren't limits to Woe, but they were boundaries. His father had told Woe, be careful who you associate with. Because if they are not in our box of belief, that is to say, if they are not believers, then they can only be non-believers. And if they are non-believers, they have the ability to taint you, to affect you. They may even take you out of your belief system, and they are dangerous. And Woe always wondered who these were. As a child, he never saw them. All he saw was his playmates. But as he grew, he understood what his father said. Eventually, Woe, who lived in the Midwest of the United States, in a small town, with farming parents, found his niche, what he wanted to do. Woe was a structured man. He loved numbers. And so he became what you would call a numbers specialist or a bookkeeper, working in a small business in the small town. A 50-minute drive every day took him into town from the farm he had grown. And that's where Woe met the ones that his father had warned him about, the associates that he worked around in the small cubicle office, surrounded by many men and women, and he realized they were different. And he was cautious and he was careful. And he didn't understand why they would, they would want to say the things they had to say and take the name of God in vain. He didn't understand the, the promiscuity that he saw. He didn't understand the dishonor for God that he saw in the personalities. He, he didn't understand the drinking that went on. He didn't understand the things that were so obvious not of God and not in his box. And he would retreat to those of like mind and sit and worship and sing the songs that were so beautiful about the glory of God. He was taught about evil and he was taught about a concept called sin. He was taught that, that those who did not believe in his box would not make it to meet the very God that he loved. And it was reasonable thinking for those who would violate the rules of society, they don't make it either. They go to prison. It made sense to woe all around him. The God that he worshipped and he felt the love of God. One time in the building that he worshipped in, there was a miraculous healing. You couldn't deny it. Beautiful it was. Someone he had known for a very long time with a disease that crippled them got up and walked and never had a chair again. It was the crippled chair. Amazing. And the leaders of this worship organization pointed to that and said, this is proof that our box is the right one. For we have God in our box. And then the admonition started to, woe. Well, do not look at any other boxes of belief because they don't have what we have. Their form of worship is incorrect according to our doctrine. And they would, they would, they would refer to the, the verses in the scripture as proof that they had the right God. 
And the other boxes were, were misled. Some of them might even be evil. And this was his life. Woe was not unhappy with his life. Going to work was frustrating because of those around him who were non-believers. He did not associate with them. He did not wish to talk to them. And they knew it. And then it happened. How do I describe this to you in a way that you can understand, human being? So I'll give it to you as it occurred. About three in the afternoon, when everybody was at their desk, and he was consumed with the numbers, they barely heard it coming. The tornado struck like a fast freight train. Without warning, it began to chew up the town. At the outskirts of town, they heard it. There was no time to do anything. It was so fast, so big. Well, can remember more than anything else the terrifying sound, the ear splitting noise of crushing granite, splintering wood, glass bursting, people screaming. The lights were out, of course. The building began to collapse so fast all at once. He saw some of the office mates crushed before his eyes. He had barely time to get under his desk when the, when the ceiling fell in and the floor opened up. And he began to cascade toward the ground. And then the lights went out. And everything was quiet. And what happens next, dear human being, is the reality I want to talk about. And this may sound like a parable, but what happens next is real. But before I go there, I want to interrupt the parable right now with truth. How does God look at yo and woe? <laughs> How does God look at woe? Does God see the box he's in and the, the, the prejudgment of other humans as wrong? And so here is what I want to tell you before we go any further. Woe found the love of God in his organization. To the spirit that I come from, we see the mythological box that humanity has created around God, not as inappropriate, but as a structure that is needed many times to find the core inside. And so woe was not inappropriate and he was not wrong. He learned the way he learned. Blessed is the human who finds God in any way where they turn inward and see the beauty that is there to see. God does not see inappropriate worship. God does not see inappropriate behavior. God sees the human searching for the core. And so I want you all to hear this, anyone, to know that if you are in an organization where the core is the worship of the one God and the spirit and the creative source, you're on the right track. And humans may disagree. And humans may say, well, you're doing it wrong. And humans may say, well, you're, you're missing the point. <laughs> humans may say, you're not supposed to put God on a pedestal and bow. I want to tell you something. That is the beginning source of realization of who God is. And some of them 
being human beings must walk before they can run. And it's part of the process. And I have a room of old souls who have walked many times, have been part of this kind of thing many times, have gone into battle many times because of doctrine. And now they sit in the room wiser and mature because of it. And now they don't need a structure or a box. So I want you to understand before we go to the next step in this story that there is no judgment ever of the search for God. Everything went black except for the music. Woe began to hear music. How do I describe this? It wasn't music. That requires ears. And Woe had no ears at that moment because where he was he realized he wasn't alive or wasn't alive as he knew he was alive. There was something odd going on. He was in a place, not a tunnel. It wasn't a cave. It was a path. A pathway that opened where all there was was darkness around him but he could hear the music. And the music wasn't really music. It was, it was energy of sonority. And he recognized a piece and a part of it. And it came with an emotion, a feeling, a perception. It came with light. It was like all of the stars in the galaxy were singing a harmony, structures of sonority he had never heard and yet he knew the tune. Singing in light. Oh, Woe had felt this before. Woe knew he was dead. What happens next, nobody knows. Everybody supposes it. But nobody really knows on the planet what happens next and Woe was right there and he wasn't afraid because he knew because of his box of belief what to expect. At least he thought he did. He started noticing that he was being passed by other human forms. And the human forms were his office workers. But he was, he was being passed by them and he looked down and realized he was being held in place in this wind of transition by a silver cord. And he couldn't go any further. And the music continued and he began to recognize it more and more. He saw ahead of him a beautiful, bright, golden, white light. He saw that all those who were passing him were moving into that light and he had it figured out. They're going to meet God. They had died with him. But why wasn't he moving forward? He strained at the silver cord with all of his might, if you can call it that, without having a body of some kind just some kind of ethereal thing with arms and legs and a head. Hard to describe how it feels in that transition, in that wind moving from the corporeal self to the spiritual self. Woe was in that wind of transition held by a silver cord watching, watching as others passed him, moving into the light. The music became stronger, not louder, but stronger, invading almost every cell of his, his etheric body that was becoming less and less corporeal and more and more transparent. Woe was in the wind of transition, but he was stuck by the silver cord. And then he noticed something. Every single human form that was passing him glowed in an odd way. Inside each one of them there was a glowing object with a pattern. A pattern that he recognized and yet he didn't recognize. It wasn't a symbol, it wasn't a number, it was a pattern. A beautiful light pattern inside every single one of them. And everyone had one. The light at the end of this seeming tunnel, which was not a tunnel at all, was growing brighter. 
He was not getting any closer to it, but it was growing brighter. He could hear or feel or perceive the music now, and he knew what it was. It was the constant, continuous music of the love of God, a patterning at a soul level that sung the song of compassion, the song of home, the song of oneness that he knew so well. Where did this come from? How did he recognize it? And they continued to pass him. It seemed like hundreds had been killed in the tornado. They were all on the same path going through this transition and they all had the same glowing essence with the same pattern. And as the bright light before him opened up, he saw it. It was the same essence with the same pattern. They were all pieces of the pattern. Woe was consumed with, with curiosity as a numbers man. <laughs> At the same time, he was in motion of not knowing why he could not proceed. He strained at the silver cord. He wanted to go forward and join the light. The music continued. Every single one of them, all those workers in his office, all going to the light, to the same place, and the light got bigger, and he got to see even more. And what he saw was a celebration of life. What he saw in that crack that he could see was a reunion. And there was, there was joy. There was not judgment. There was joy. And it, it's not what he was taught. And it was beautiful. It didn't matter who it was. They were all collecting and moving past him. And he wanted so, so much to go forward. Held by that tether. Held by that tether. And he wondered, is this, is this the way it's going to be? Is this some place where you're stuck between worlds? Why am I not moving forward or back? What is going on? But he wasn't frustrated because he was in the wind of love. Woe awoke in the hospital, surrounded by his family, and realized what had happened. He had been in a coma. Now we stop the parable again to explain that woe had just had what has been called by humanity as an NDE, a near-death experience. We rename that, by the way, NLE, near-life experience. <laughs> no one comes back from an NDE and recovers. They come back changed. No human can go into the wind of transition even temporarily without being affected at the corporeal essence level. Something happens to them. It's difficult to explain, but when you're in the wind of transition, you're changed. And the longer you're in the wind, the more changes occur. The very essence of your awakened spirit expands. It's like every moment in the wind is like another lifetime of wisdom that you live and you live and you see. And woe came back and opened his eyes. And the family stood around him. And he knew instantly he was alive, but that he had witnessed something extremely real. And he looked around and he had a new gift for every single corporeal family human member standing around the bed had a glowing essence with a pattern. He was able to see God in everyone.
they celebrated his life and eventually he healed and the first time he got up and went into the room with a mirror he saw it in himself the glow was there the pattern was there he looked at the doctors the nurses he went out on the street and they all had it now what happens next may surprise you Woe could have done anything at this point because Woe had knowledge beyond his box of belief. In fact, it conflicted with his doctrine. It conflicted with an, an idea of a judgmental God. It conflicted with the rules. To confirm it, Woe did something he never told anybody about. When nobody knew where Woe was, Woe visited another box. <laughs> he visited the one that his leadership had told him was the worst. And he went in and sat. And what he saw, he already knew. They all had the essence, they all had the glow, and they all had the pattern. And he didn't recognize the songs that they sang, but they were about the love of God. And in this place he saw crutches that were hung in certain places to represent the healings that occurred in the box, and he knew what he was looking at. That human beings tend to sequester everything to themselves and never look around. And he was never told that the healings were in all the other boxes. He came back to his box, and this may shock you, but he never left. Because he had the wisdom that told him he didn't need to. He didn't need to upset anyone around him. He knew a truth that became his own. The love of God was the same, regardless of the doctrine. He sang the songs in another way. He heard the music in another way. And those around woe saw God in him in another way. Because of the experience that he had had, he was able to share with him the beauty of what it was like to transition to the other side. To give them hope so that there would be no sting of death. He never told them the whole story. He didn't have to. There was no reason to. Because they were all seekers and searchers. When woe was in the wind of transition, he had heard a voice. He'll never forget it. And the voice spoke to him with his name as he was struggling against the silver cord. And the voice said, Woe, when it's time, you'll be here too. Until then, celebrate the majesty of what you've seen in every cell. Because God is in you. And this is what he carried. And there was no instruction from the, from the light to go back and evangelize it. And there was no instruction about telling everybody they were wrong. And there was no instruction to change anything but himself. And he lived his life in that fashion. He never upset the apple cart <laughs> for those around him. He only showed God in himself. And that was good enough for woe. And we could end the parable by telling you there was a day that woe experienced the wind of transition without the court. But we're not going to tell you that. Because we want to live, we want to leave woe with you alive and working in a society like you have to work. As an example of the God inside. Of the patience and the wisdom and the benevolence and the compassion that this human had for everyone around him. Regardless of the doctrine of the box. <laughs> because that's what we are looking at with you. It's a parable for the new age. 
where you will capture the essence inside you and see it in others like woe did. Woe's gift is yours. See God in others first and see their personality second. And you will have more tolerance because of it. Because you're so different. Given in love this day. And so it is.